Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Given the ubiquitousness of the AR-15 platform and the recent resurgence of interest in bullpup rifles, it's probably inevitable that people would try to make AR-15 bullpup conversions, uh, as indeed we've seen. But as different people and companies have attempted to come up with bullpup AR-15 designs, I'm concerned that many of them have sort of taken the wrong approach to developing the design. Because as I look at the SHOT Show debut videos and other video announcements about these different uh, AR-15 bullpups, they all seem to follow the same basic pattern. Specifically, as a designer considers the AR-15 design and determines how to convert it to a bullpup, they will first separate it into its two major sub-assemblies, the upper receiver assembly and the lower receiver assembly. Uh, the lower is what houses the stock, and as well as the fire control group and the magazine well and, and the controls. And that clearly is designed as a conventional rifle, you know, with the, the shoulder stock sticking out the back, uh, the trigger located where it is, etc., etc. And so they tend to design a fully custom lower receiver to replace the original lower. And this gives them the opportunity to completely redesign the fire control parts and the controls and so forth uh, to be uniquely suited to their bullpup rifle design. But of course, as part of their redesign of the lower, they inevitably get rid of the buffer tube assembly, uh, which would otherwise kind of be sticking out the back if you move the stock forward to create a bullpup design. So that means that they have to then mate their proprietary lower receiver to a bufferless upper receiver. Now, up until a few years ago, bufferless uppers were kind of a unicorn. You know, everybody knew what they looked like, but nobody would ever actually seen one, uh, at least not available and in stock. Uh, now, in the last couple of years, that's kind of changed. I know there's the, the BRN 180, uh, which is a bufferless upper, and I think Brownells actually also stocks another brand of bufferless uppers. Uh, but many of these companies would try to make their own uh, proprietary bufferless uppers you know, back before they were available, and even now that they're becoming available, they're not nearly as available as traditional uppers. I mean, if you were to survey the availability of bufferless uppers through online distributors, I think you'd probably be able to identify five or six different unique options from two or three different unique uh, manufacturers. Uh, and even the cheapest of those probably start just a little under a thousand dollars. Whereas if you compare that to traditional uppers, uh, those are going to start around $200, and you're going to have hundreds, if not thousands, of unique options from dozens, if not hundreds, of unique manufacturers. Anyway, so the designer comes up with a unique proprietary lower, uh, they specify a bufferless upper, and they end up with a bullpup rifle that is notionally inspired by the AR-15 design, but has virtually no parts interchangeability with a traditional standard AR-15. And their MSRP typically lands well above $2,000 and they will probably assure their marketing department that their MSRP is competitive with other bullpup rifles. But it doesn't really work out that way, because people who have $2,000 plus that they're willing to spend on a dedicated bullpup rifle are typically going to be much more interested in a dedicated bullpup rifle, something designed from the ground up as a bullpup, like the Desert Tech MDR, or the Israeli Tavor, or the Springfield Helion, rather than an AR-15 bullpup conversion, which is notionally at least what their product is. Meanwhile, people who are simply interested in AR-15s 
and might be interested in a bullpup version of an AR-15 are going to be comparing the price of their product to the price of other AR-15s. And an entry-level AR-15 goes for like $350 to $400. So compare that to an entry-level AR-15 bullpup at $2,000, you're not going to be getting many customers for the bullpup. And so companies that introduce these kinds of AR-15 bullpups tend not to stay in business for very long, uh, and so AR-15 bullpups remain relatively obscure. But to me, that begs the question of whether this failure was just inevitable or whether there's a better way to design an AR-15 bullpup. And it seems to me that, in principle, the viability of an AR-15 bullpup design hinges on two things. First, it would have to be price competitive with AR-15s, more so than with other bullpups. Uh, and two, it's got to maximize the actual component interchangeability with AR-15s so that you can capitalize on the customizability that the AR-15 platform enjoys. In principle, it seems like if a company was to come up with an AR-15 bullpup conversion kit that could be installed on virtually any AR-15 and only added maybe $100 or so to the cost of the rifle, then that might be a very attractive product to a lot of firearms enthusiasts who are interested in the bullpup trend, but not to the point of being ready to drop thousands of dollars on a dedicated bullpup rifle. Because admittedly, bullpups have their pros and cons, and I'm thinking it's probably going to take some trigger time with a bullpup rifle to really get a feel for whether the pros outweigh the cons. But I think I can speak for most shooters in saying that even if you can afford a $2,000 rifle in principle, you're probably not going to buy one that you're not sure if you're going to like. But if the price to explore the bullpup concept is less than $100 and you retain the component interchangeability that ensures component support and allows you to customize your bullpup just like you customize all your ARs, then that starts to become easier to justify. But now that begs the question of whether a bullpup conversion kit such as I've described can actually be developed in practice. And I actually think it can. Specifically, I considered the problem myself, and this is what I came up with. Now this is basically a standard AR-15. Uh, all I've done to it is that I replaced the original pistol grip with this buttstock and grip assembly. Uh, and then there's a transfer bar inside of here that pulls the original trigger when I pull this trigger here. Uh, I've got a rail cover on top of the receiver so that I can rest my cheek on it. And then I've got a red dot sight mounted out on the gas block there. So this is what I'm calling my BR-15. Now, admittedly, this is not the most refined bullpup in the world but it has the advantage of inheriting the reliability and the customizability of the AR-15 rifle. And then the conversion only cost me about $25 worth of plastic and hardware to put together this prototype. Now, as I said, one of the great attractors to an inexpensive AR-15 bullpup conversion is that it gives me a chance to try out the bullpup concept without spending a whole lot of money on a dedicated rifle. So I think the thing we need to do now is take this down to the range trenches and do a little shooting.
Okay, so this thing is actually really fun to shoot. You know, the buffer tube hanging off on the back here may look a little funny, but in use, I actually really like the way that it kind of vertically indexes the stock on my shoulder. Of course, the big advantage of the bullpup conversion is that it moves the center of gravity way back, and so that makes the gun feel a lot lighter. You know, it, compared to a regular AR-15, it's just so easy to hold the barrel up, uh, and in principle, I think this could make for much faster target transitions. You know, with a little bit of practice, I should be able to swing the muzzle around a lot faster because I've got so much less inertia out here. Additionally, even though the overall length of the gun may not be much different from a normal AR-15, because I still got the buffer tube on there, the way I'm holding it is something akin to maybe a retention position with a normal AR-15. So it, it really brings the gun in closer to my body, uh, which should provide an advantage if I need to maneuver in confined spaces or anything like that. The trigger pull arguably leaves something to be desired. I mean, this was kind of an entry-level AR-15, so it didn't have a great trigger pull to begin with, and then adding the transfer bar just served to make that trigger pull longer and grittier. Uh, so from a purely aesthetic standpoint, the trigger pull is pretty atrocious. That said, it didn't really prevent me from shooting the gun or enjoying shooting the gun. Uh, it may have slowed me down just a little bit, but even that, I think with a little bit of practice, a little getting used to the trigger pull, I don't think would be an issue. Of course, the manual of arms for this thing is going to be a little bit different because of the way we've changed the layout. So uh, on a normal AR-15 where I'd use my right thumb to switch the safety on and off, on this one, I kind of have to use my left thumb, you know, just put my hand on the receiver and then click it on or off as needed, uh, which isn't necessarily too bad. I mean, if I'm just standing at a ready position, you know, I can kind of hold the gun like this with my left thumb resting on the safety, and then when I'm ready to shoot, just click that off and bring the gun up. Uh, and same in reverse there. Uh, the magazine release again, is still accessible. I just press the button and then pull the magazine out, so, or let it drop free if that's what you prefer, but I've still got rounds in here, so I'm not going to drop my magazine in the mud right now, but uh, that's a little different, but not too bad. Accessing the bolt release is probably the most awkward operation. Um, I, you know, I, again, I can either hit that with my left thumb or reach over and hit it with my right hand, but Actually, that's kind of the same as any AR-15, you know, so I don't know that that's really much of a loss. As I was shooting, I did notice a little bit of a breeze, you know, kind of around my right cheek, just from, you know, gases venting out of the action as the gas-operated semi-automatic operates. Um, but it wasn't enough to be unpleasant or distracting. So, I'm not going to pretend that this is the end-all be-all of bullpups, but I actually really like how it turned out. I mean, for as simplistic as this conversion is, it actually works really well. Now, would this be commercially viable as a product? That I'm not so sure about. You know, I'm afraid that the aesthetics might present a little bit of a marketing challenge, and then by the time you factor in... Uh, you know, labor for assembly and benefits and shop overhead and machinery depreciation and so on and so forth. It's hard to say whether or not there'd be enough of a profit margin left in something like this uh, to actually make a profit on it. So I'm probably not going to pursue commercial development at this time. Uh, but I probably will post the STL files for the plastic stock on my website if anyone else is interested in tinkering with the concept. Um, so my website should be linked at the end of this video, and until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.